Opposition spokesperson Tony Kristovich joins us now. Tony, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Monica. What's the opposition's take on the McGowan government slamming shut the border with Victoria? Was it rash? Oh, look, Monica, politicians are not health experts. The Chief Health Officer and his advisers are the ones who have the expertise in this particular area, and we need to follow their advice. It's also important that they also front the media so that we know what they're actually saying, uh, how they expect that to be implemented, and the resources that need to be towards that. So, so you're saying it's rash, a rash decision? Well, look, I'm, I'm saying that we need to know what the Chief Health Officer has right. to say about it and the details behind it. The State Government says that your party is playing desperate politics. It says that your fear-mongering and blatant misinformation is a slap in the face to hard-working health workers and police uh, who are working to keep our state safe. Your response to that? Well, look, uh, as we know, people are fleeing quarantine and escaping uh, on, a, on a regular basis. We hear Dr Andrew Miller coming out saying that there isn't enough protective equipment in our hospitals. We hear that our emergency departments can't cope. We also hear from St John Ambulance that the uh, ambulance ramping is out of control. So it's the medical professionals that are bringing all of these issues to the table. It's the opposition that's trying to hold the government to account for its failings in these areas. We also know that people are being turned away for testing centres uh, on a regular basis as well. OK, and we're going to look at that because more than 16,000 people who arrived on or after December 21st have now been ordered to be tested, tested and isolate. Do you agree with the backdating? 11 days is a long time to be in the community. Well, let's, let's not forget that these people have already been out and about in the community and now we're talking about testing them in 11 days' time rather than doing immediate testing. I think it's... Uh, immediate indictment. testing? Can the WA testing system handle that? Well, it obviously can't. There's no doubt about that because we've turned away a few hundred people recently from New South Wales where they were sent home because we couldn't afford to do the testing. We need to actually have an independent inquiry to, to, to determine whether or not we're prepared for a COVID outbreak in West Australia. OK, well, you're saying we need immediate testing, but how would we do that? if we currently can't handle it? Well, we should. we've had nine months of no COVID in this state. This state government has had more time than anyone else in the world to prepare for COVID preparedness. So if they're not ready, we need to know that now and we need, we need to know why they're not ready. Is WA doing enough testing across the board? <laughs> Oh, definitely not. Look, in the last seven days, we've only tested 13,000 people. The next lowest uh, state was, I think, Queensland with 24,000 people. Uh, New South Wales have tested over 200,000 people. We should be able to ramp up our testing at the drop of a hat. We shouldn't allow COVID to spread through the community because we don't have the capacity to do the testing. OK, very, very quickly, Tony, I do just have to ask, how would you do it? Well, look, it's important to make sure that the information is made public, that we ha have the resources that are required to make sure that everything can be delivered as required, and the Chief Health Officer needs to be coming out and directing that, and we need an independent inquiry to make sure that the resources are there. OK, we'll leave it there. Tony, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Monica.